Greetings from Hopalong Hollow. This is Jerry. I'm sitting on the steps of my front porch today with a lot of new plants that I got at a garden center and I don't usually do that anymore because they're so expensive. But I decided to treat myself today and the prices weren't too bad. So normally I'd be planting everything from seed, but I've decided to give myself a break <laughs> and I got quite a few plants here which I want to talk about. Whenever I purchase any plants in pots, they will always be perennials. I wouldn't purchase annuals in a pot. They're just too easy to grow from seed and I, I wouldn't spend that kind of money on something that isn't going to come back for me. So everything I have here is a perennial. Scabiosa or pincushion flower is a perennial scabiosa, but I've also got seed for annual scabiosa and I've got it in the greenhouse and right now it's just not doing anything. So I need some instant, I want some instant color, I need some instant satisfaction in my border over there because I've got some peonies that are about to bloom and I really want them to have some beautiful flowers blooming around them. So I've just got about, uh, I don't know, four or five different varieties of plants here. I always buy at least a minimum of three of each because it's just a lot smarter to buy a multiples of one plant than to buy one of everything. You just won't you have need a sense of cohesion and therefore if you plant in um, splotches of three, like a row of three of the same plant or a triangle of three of the same plant and then you just skip around and you do the same thing over and over throughout the garden. It just gives you a sense of harmony and it is just a lot more pleasing to the eye. And that's what we're trying to do is create beauty in the garden. I want to incorporate in that front yard border right there. So I pulled some things out of the greenhouse that are looking like they are needed to be up potted. So we've got some Agastache and we've got some Amobium. Those little hollyhocks over there, they're still pretty small. And here I've got some daisies that I've grabbed from uh, here, there and everywhere that I also want to put in this up front garden. So let's take a look at this beautiful, beautiful pincushion flower, Scabiosa. It likes lonely soil, well-draining soil, and I'm going to have to amend that soil with some sand and some compost, mix it all up, get it a good uh, consistency of draining, and a lot of these plants, most of these plants, should do pretty well there. This is Thrift, also called Armeria, and this beautiful little columbine, I just have to show this to you. I have not done well growing columbine from seed. And this one, but look at this one. Isn't this sweet? This is really a sweet little flower here. It's not your typical columbine. It's called Winky Double Red and White. Winky Double Red and White Columbine here. Isn't that cute? Now before I go and spend money, way too much money, on potted plants at the nursery, I need to know I need to have a good idea of what I want beforehand, the soil conditions that it needs, and exactly the position I'm going to be putting it in, and what it's going to look like with the flowers that are going to be surrounding it. So I thought about all those things before I actually went to the store. It's also a pretty good idea to know all about your plant. So if you don't have a garden book that explains to you the uh, requirements of a certain plant, Look it up online and learn everything you can about it because it'll help you keep it alive. I should know. I've been killing plants for years because I just saw something pretty. I wanted it in my garden. I didn't pay any attention to the type of soil that it needed and the, the light requirements, the watering requirements, and I've killed so many plants over the years. So I don't do that anymore, especially now that um, you're either raising them from seed, <laughs> they're just you're growing them in your nursery, and you're really, really c taking care of them. You don't want them to die, and you don't want them to die if you've spent a lot of money on a potted plant. So, for example, this thrift, Ameria maritima. I only bought three of them, and I'm going to put them together. And I'm not sure if I want to put them in a pot and place the pot in the garden or straight into the ground. I'm not, I don't know yet. One of the first things I do when I bring home a pot of flowers is I really clean it up a lot. And you can see right here that I've got some seeds going already on this plant. And I'm gonna cut those off and I've already got some seeds off of this brand new plant. So I'm gonna plant those little seeds in a pot 
as well as planting these plants into the ground. I love these. They look a lot like chives and they look also a lot like uh, alliums, but look at each little globe. I think, I think globe plants are so pretty. Each little globe has clusters and clusters of flowers for the pollinators. They don't have to leave the plant. They can go from one little flower to the next and get an awful lot of pollen. But what I like to do also, as I said, is clip off, just deadhead it, and by the time this has been sitting in the nursery for I don't know how long, but I've already got some seeds here that I can use. Put those in a little envelope and plant those in a tray. Another plant that is so trustworthy and grows really well in our area, probably yours too, is salvia or sage. I love sages. They're so wonderful because they can bloom as many as three times in a season if you keep them deadheaded as they're going along. And they just get bigger and bigger every year. It's a really great perennial. They get to be usually no more than, oh, I don't know, 16, maybe sometimes 16 to 18 inches tall. And they, they're nice and bushy and they really spread out. I'll show you a couple that I put in last year. And they come in shades of deep, deep blue, uh, let's see, and, and deep, deep purple as well. Oh, and I got one raspberry colored as well. This one is Rose Salvia. It's a little bit leggy and I want to take off all those dried leaves and I want to maybe trim this down a little bit so that it'll be a little bushier for me. And so that's what I'm doing right now. Before I put these in the ground, I'm going to give them a nice fish emulsion fertilizer and I'm going to get them nice and trimmed and cleaned up a bit so they're much tidier and ready to really, really grow in the garden. Now, I don't know exactly if I'll be placing any of these. This is a pearly everlasting right here. It's a teeny white flower with a little yellow center. Really, really sweet, but it's actually a, a dried flower. I got this to um, use for dried flowers, but uh, these are the Charles Doubting trays. Just love them. Um, let me give you a, a look at the roots here. You can see why these have really got to be moved. But the neat thing about them is you just pop it through on the bottom, pull it out, here you go, and now I can pretty much separate all these little plants, there are far too many in here, as you can see, just far too many, and then I'll put them in some separate little pots, and I have so many I'll be able to put these in a lot of different gardens, they'll be a really pretty little accent for many, many of the gardens. The day was definitely the six and a half inch pot of pansies, which are a dollar fifty a pot. Six and a half uh, inch in diameter, and that, that, that nursery was just packed looking for these plants, which were such a great deal. Now they're really stuffed in there, and I'm going to put them in a much larger container. I'm not putting these in the ground. I'm just going to put them in a container. I have got A lot of these little guys up potted, some of them in pots, one of them in a bucket. That's going to go up on the um, slope garden, and then I have to find a place for all of these beautiful plants. These are all perennials. Um, there's lavender in there and rosemary. Yes, I'm trying lavender again. Hello, Estella. Estella.
is really pretty too.